Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're taking a look at the Scythe Shuriken 2. This is a small form factor cooler that's meant for these really sort of uh, limited chassis where you don't have much cooler height to work with and this thing is well hopefully going to be really really good for a system like this Node 202 system featuring a Ryzen 9 3900X. So let's go ahead and hop into this review and take a look at this thing to see whether it's worth your hard-earned money. Now before we get started and overly into the review, I do want to mention right now pricing and availability are in those links down below. Right now this thing I think is priced around $42, but again check those links down below in case you need to check out the current pricing and availability. So let's go ahead and talk about this thing. Now pretty much like all Scythe coolers out there, this thing has really awesome compatibility with not just current generation sockets, but also past generation sockets. It features compatibility for LGA 1366. 1200, 11 5X, and even as far back as LGA 775. On the AMD side, we feature compatibility with obviously AM4, but also compatibility for AM3, 3 Plus, AM2, 2 Plus, FM2, and FM1. So this thing has great compatibility with mainstream sockets. Now, of course, unfortunately, it doesn't have compatibility with the high end desktop sockets, but that's also not surprising because this thing is not meant to cool the really, really hot chips that we see at the higher end of things. It just doesn't have that kind of capacity. So it's probably a good decision for Scythe to completely leave that out altogether as far as compatibility goes. Now you see it in the Node 202 here and it's really pushing the limits of the Node 202 as far as actually fitting in the chassis. It is advertised and I did measure it at right at 58 millimeters tall, including the fan. So make sure that your actual chassis that it's gonna go in can actually fit a cooler that high. The Node 202 can just barely do that if you leave out the fan filter that goes to the top panel, which I virtually never use anyways, just because it limits airflow that much more. So this will fit in a Node 202 case if you're willing to get rid of that top fan filter, and it does that just fine. Now inside the box, in addition to obviously the cooler itself, you do get instructions instructions as well as all hardware needed to install this into your system. You do get a little packet of thermal paste which I did use for testing on this cooler specifically. Uh, I did not use it on the other cooler that I tested just because, well, there wasn't enough for two applications in that little tube. Uh, if I was really pushing it, I might have been able to get a second application out of it, but it's really intended for a one-use packet, which is why it's just a little packet and not a resealable tube or anything. I'm sure that saves just a little bit of money. So I did use the included thermal grease with this particular cooler. And speaking of competition, I'm putting this thing up against right now the incumbent champion of this particular setup. And that is one of the original Wraith Spire coolers that had the original sort of copper slug, the vapor, I believe it was a vapor chamber actually in the uh, original Wraith Spire cooler. And then I swapped out the original fan with a small, real slim fan from my Cryorig C7 cooler. So it's a custom cooler that this thing is going up against. And just like this thing, that uh, Wraith Spire cooler does barely fit in the Node 202, provided that you are once again willing to get rid of that fan filter. So the heights on these two coolers are very similar, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how they perform. One last note about compatibility in general, the RAM clearance is absolutely not an issue with this cooler, as this cooler has really no conflicts with any hardware in any sort of system that you're putting it in because it stays within that footprint of the actual CPU socket itself. So you can use absolutely any RAM modules you like, even if they have super tall heat sinks on them, it's not gonna be interfered with by the cooler whatsoever. Installation of the Scythe Shuriken 2 is naturally easy, just like pretty much all Scythe coolers out there. I will say, I kind of wish that they included some sort of screwdriver to install this thing because what's basically expected is if you don't want to remove the fan, you do have to get a screwdriver between the fan blades to have access to the actual screws to tighten down the cooler 
once you have the brackets in place, which uh, the bracket system itself is fantastic by Scythe, and I assume that's why they just continue to stick with it. It's just very easy to use. But unless you have a slim screwdriver, you're gonna be uh, getting up against the fan blades with this particular fan because there's really not much gap between them at all. So I wish Scythe had included a slim screwdriver to get down in there, but by the same token, if you don't have one laying around that uh, can fit between the fan blades, you can either just risk it a little bit and rub up against those fan blades as you tighten the cooler down, or you could always just remove the fan altogether, which of course does an add an extra step to installation. But at the end of the day, if you're just installing it, then just forgetting about it because you're not planning to take your system apart a whole lot, then that's probably not a big deal. Now that we have the cooler installed, we're gonna put it up against that modified Wraith Spire cooler, but the actual test setup itself is again the Node 202 running a Ryzen 9 3900X that is at completely stock speeds. We have 32 gigabytes of RAM running at 2133 megahertz. So if the Cinebench scores that you're about to see look a little bit off of what you may be getting with a similar uh, spec 3900X system, then it may be because your RAM speeds are running a little bit faster. I'm not sure how much that impacts the Cinebench scores, but RAM speed is just that, that 2133 megahertz. But everything else is completely stock. So we're gonna be looking at temperatures. We're also gonna be looking at the sustained clock speed after a 10 minute run as well to see just what performance we may be giving up with one cooler over the other. So with all that said, let's go ahead and test out the Spire cooler first to give us a baseline of what we're comparing the Shuriken 2 to. Okay, so we've been running Cinebench R20 for about 10 minutes now. And if we move over here, we can see the CPU temperature is right around 76, 77 degrees. 77 has been its maximum so far. The score here, at least the last run, was 67.22 after a uh, little over 10 minutes now. And keep in mind, that with that score, this is memory running at 2133 megahertz across all 32 gigabytes of that memory. So we're not exactly talking about the fastest memory in existence here. That score would probably go up a little bit with faster RAM. But now if we also go across and look at the clock speeds, what we see here is about 3.7, 3.8 gigahertz across these 12 cores as Cinebench continues here. So right now, the uh, 3900X is definitely under control here with this uh, Wraith Spire cooler. And now we're gonna switch over to the Scythe Shuriken 2 to see what kind of comparison we can draw between this sort of modded Spire cooler versus that Shuriken 2. Okay, so we have now been running the Scythe Shuriken 2 for 10 minutes. We see Cinebench going on along. This is our most recent Cinebench score after a 10 minute loop there. And what you'll see here with temperatures is they are virtually identical to the modified Wraith uh, Spire cooler with the C7 fan on top. We have a maximum temperature here of 78 degrees Celsius, which I think is one more uh, degree Celsius than we saw with the Spire. But at the same time, that's well within the margin of error, especially because I don't have my testing nearly as controlled as somebody like uh, Gamers Nexus might. But if we go ahead and look at the clock speeds, we also see that the clock speeds are very, very similar to what we saw with the Wraith Spire cooler. So this becomes one of those things where if you have a Spire laying around, it's probably a little bit cheaper to just buy a new fan for it, a slim fan that can fit on top of it. But also, if you don't have a cooler like that laying around and you need a cooler for your small form factor uh, rig, then something like this uh, Scythe might actually make sense for you. Now, of course, we do have one more test to run. We do need to hear how it performs uh, noise-wise compared to that Spire cooler. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of sound samples taken when these coolers were fully loaded up and basically at the maximum temperatures they saw. So I guess it's about conclusion time. And right now the Shuriken 2 is going off for around 42-ish dollars. And again, see those links in the description down below in case you are interested in current 
pricing and availability. But uh, this thing is not a bad value and it's not a spectacular value either. It seems to be lined up right in the price range that a lot of these smaller form factor coolers are lined up in. Now, if it were me and you're working with a case that can fit this cooler in it, I would actually do what I've done in the past, which is grab that original Wraith Spire cooler and just put a slim fan on it. It seems to be a great performing solution for small form factor builds. However, if you're not looking to do any sort of modifications to a cooler, you don't want to have to worry about acquiring parts from different coolers, then this is absolutely not a bad option. It's not overly obnoxiously loud and it does a pretty good job keeping a 3900X cool. But by the same token, we're talking about 12 cores and 24 threads. I would expect the vast majority of you out there are not shoving that kind of power into these small form factor builds uh, if you are more power to you. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of these rigs are lined up as sort of gaming rigs where you might not be putting a 12 core in there. Maybe you're looking at more something like a uh, 30 800x and putting eight cores and 16 threads in which case this cooler is going to give it uh, that much more headroom uh, with actually keeping the CPU itself cool and give you that performance back uh, as far as clock speeds go. So as far as I'm concerned, this cooler is positioned in the market right where it needs to be and I would have no problem recommending it to somebody that doesn't want to mess around with uh, modifying their own cooler or building their own homebrew solution. This thing does a pretty good job, so it gets an easy recommendation for me. It's easy to install, does a good job, maintains complete component compatibility because there's no clearance issues around the CPU socket itself. So good job Scythe love the product and uh yeah if you want to buy it again links down below as well as to the ryzen 3900x i used and the case that i used in this particular uh review if you like the video give it a like share subscribe comment all those things are very helpful for the channel you can follow me both on instagram and on twitter at hoosier hardware and as always i'll let youtube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch i'm shane with hoosier hardware and i'll see you guys in the next video